And in the last few hours, we've been tracking active fire conditions in and around Truckee as firefighters work to keep communities safe. Take a look. Two fires breaking out hours apart from each other in the Truckee region. The one on your left sparking earlier this afternoon behind a Safeway. Meanwhile, on your right, this fire off I-80 near the state line has diverted all traffic going eastbound onto Highway 267. According to CHP, the fire began as the result of a vehicle fire on the interstate. Evacuation orders are in place in the Gulf Branch area in Nevada. That fire, approximately 400 acres. And just moments ago, the Truckee Donner Public Utility District confirming the power has been restored in the area after it went down earlier tonight. This is a live look at the power outage map in Truckee. They say that the system was de-energized because of the fire's proximity. And we're learning more information on that fire that broke out behind the Safeway Shopping Center in Truckee. We know that 3.5 acres have burned and containment is 20%. All evacuations have been lifted in this fire. ABC 10's Garage Paul Sanga shows us how fire crews were able to stop it quickly before it could spread. A relaxing Sunday afternoon in Truckee, quickly turning into trouble. Oh, wow, look at the past fire near a major shopping center, sending large plume of smoke into the air. A scary sight for neighbors like Denise Dombra. That's a little unnerving. You know, we got the evacuation notice to get prepared. Heavy air attack, helping push the flames back. And they were just one after another. Getting ground crews there just in time. This video is showing crews stopping the fire just as it approached Coyote Moon Golf Course. And this fire was able to spread because of the light winds, but most importantly, because of the steep terrain really forced this fire to run up, making the firefight very difficult, access very difficult. But luckily, the air resources, also the golf course, on the other hand, helped out. And there have been multiple spot fires, um, which is why we're not uh, upping the containment levels right now. Truckee Fire Battalion Chief Ryan Ochoa says help from other fire agencies around the Lake Tahoe Basin played a large part in suppressing the past fire. The fuel is dry, it's receptive to embers, and I think that's kind of evident by the fact that these spot fires keep popping up. How the fire started is under investigation. Ochoa says earlier in the day, a smaller fire ignited in that area, and they're investigating if the two are connected. As the state enters peak wildfire season, residents breathing a sigh of relief. The past fire's impact was minimal. I've lived here since 1977 and we've had several fires over the years but I mean our town seems to get right on it plus all the other agencies that come in to help out. So we've been really fortunate. In Truckee, Garge Paul Sunga, ABC 10. Thanks Garge Paul. Now to the Crozier fire in El Dorado County. Some residents there remain out of their homes five days after the fire started northeast of Placerville. This is video of the firefight from Cal Fire showing the steep terrain. Part of the El Dorado National Forest is closed to the public. The Placerville Airport also remains closed. Cal Fire released this 3D map showing just how remote the Crozier Fire is. It's burned close to 2,000 acres and the fire is now 28% contained. While Cal Fire says the repopulation efforts are now underway, they want to be cautious as the fire has the potential to spread. This fire started down in a, a deep canyon down in a ravine. The challenge today is going to be with the winds. Definitely have some gusts coming today. Crews say that they're trying their best and asking for some patience in the meantime. Sacramento Metro Fire uh, set, sent us this video of a fire burning in Rio Linda. This is a view from above the, as the four acre fire burned several outbuildings. Livestock and homes were also threatened. An extensive cleanup is now underway. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, but the investigation is ongoing. And the Park Fire, the fourth largest fire in state history, continues to burn northeast of Chico. More than 429,000 acres have burned, and the fire is now 38% contained since starting two and a half weeks ago. Hundreds of homes are destroyed. Evacuation orders remain in place in Tehama County. And Cal Matters reports that the fire spread into the Mill and Deer Creek watersheds in Tehama County, which are two of three remaining creeks where wild Chinook salmon still spawn in the Central Valley. And so the effects of these wildfires being felt 
far and wide. Let's get it over to Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods. And Thanks. we're still tracking some danger as we head into tonight and even tomorrow. Red flag warning in effect for parts of the Sierra and also Northeast California. As you can see, the perimeter here of the Park Fire, the Corrosor Fire remains in between the 8050 corridor. So this red flag warning not necessarily impacting those direct fire lines, but we've got the gusty winds, the low humidity, and the potential for rapid fire spread. Here's a look at how the winds will start to taper off a little bit for tonight, only to pick back up tomorrow. This is going to bring in some cooler air. Unfortunately, those winds always troublesome when you're fighting those fires up anywhere in the Sierra as well as the foothills. Now, tomorrow night, they start to back off into our Tuesday morning, but in that time frame, we are going to see some uh, difficult firefight. As far as those temperatures, we're dropping about 5 to 10 degrees. That's courtesy again of that cooling breeze coming in with readings right now in the 60s and 70s in the valley and the foothills, 50s and 60s up top for the Sierra. Tonight's overnight lows will fall into the upper 50s. We've got a mix of clouds out there. Highs tomorrow warming into the 80s. We have yet to talk about our most spectacular meteor shower of the year, Luke. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks, Monica. We'll check back in with you soon. And remember, you can stay up to date with the latest wildfires by downloading the ABC 10 app. It's free anywhere you get your apps. And remember to turn on your notifications.